Hey guys, it's Chris. From portable tornadoes to making your own lava lamps and more. Here are eight scientific experiments you can do at home. Uh, this will be fun. Number eight, the power of a vacuum. What is a vacuum? How can you explain what one looks like or how it works if you can't see it? What we know is that a vacuum can represent emptiness or a void and can also suck stuff in like a vacuum cleaner. There's a very simple test that you can do to demonstrate the concept. First, get an egg. Then you'll want to find a container that has an opening, but one that is sized just small enough so that the egg cannot be put into it, but rather gets stuck in the hole, like a glass bottle or a skinny jar. Now take the egg out of the hole and get a match. First, you'll want to light the match, drop it into the container, preferably a bottle or a beaker if you have one, and then place the egg back on the opening to seal the top. At first, nothing will happen, but because the bottom of the egg seals the opening, the heat from the lit match cannot get out in large amounts. The fire will start to burn up the oxygen, and as it consumes the oxygen, it will start to create a vacuum. As the vacuum builds, it'll start to pull on the egg until finally, it's sucked right into the container. This is a fine example of why astronauts need to be careful with their own oxygen in space. Because the slightest crack on their lines or helmet will create a vacuum effect, and the changing pressure can start sucking everything away. Number 7. Reflection and Refraction How we perceive light in the world itself is an important part of our lives. But light is something that can be manipulated when it reaches your eye, not unlike a mirage in a desert. There are other tricks though, such as making something seem invisible when it's clearly not. For this experiment, you'll need a couple of Pyrex test tubes, some wide Pyrex beakers, water, and vegetable oil. First, fill up one of the beakers about three quarters full of water. Take an empty test tube and put it into the water. You'll notice you can see the test tube in the water. In fact, it actually looks a little magnified. The reason for this is that the Pyrex test tube, beaker, and water have different refraction indexes. By that, I mean how it bends and reflects light is different between the two. Since it's different, you can see the tube. Now get the other beaker, fill it up halfway with water, then fill the other half with vegetable oil. Grab the test tube from before and fill it up with vegetable oil as well. Once done with that, dip the test tube into the beaker until it touches the bottom. If you did it right, you'll see that the test tube can only be seen in the water, not the vegetable oil. And why is that? It's because the refraction index from Pyrex in vegetable oil is basically the same. So the light doesn't bend or reflect, it just keeps going right through. And now you have a partially invisible beaker. Number 6. Insect Hotel Bugs are everywhere in the world, but they don't all live in the same places. They each have their own special habitats, and to help illustrate that, you can teach your kids how to make an insect hotel. Or make one yourself. Science isn't just for kids, I like bugs too, just not them crawling all over me, okay? All you'll need for this is a large wooden box that has multiple compartments that can be sealed enough so that the other environments don't leak into the others. For each of the rooms, you'll make it full of items from your nearby environment. Dirt, sand, rocks, sticks, leaves, and more. Again, make each area different. Each one its own little ecosystem, and then make sure it's protected from the other environments. If you do it right and leave room for the insects themselves to get into the habitats, you'll find after a few days that various insects are making themselves at home within your hotel. Ants, bees, flies, and more will find which environment is the most comfortable for them and make that their new home. A perfect example of how much a bunch of little areas in a single place can allow many animals to exist at once. And we're about to get to number 5, but first, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 5. Animated Marker What makes up something can have a big effect on how it's affected by other substances. A dry erase marker is a great example of this. For this experiment, you'll need a glass dish, bowl, or some similar material, a dry erase marker, and some water. All you need to do is take your dry erase marker and draw a shape or figure into the middle of the dish or bowl. Start with a stick figure if you're not sure what else to draw. It doesn't have to be too big, just as long as it's noticeable and cool and amazing. Just kidding. Your artistic talent is not the point here. Now fill the bowl with water, and when you do, you'll notice that the image that you just drew is literally lifted off the bottom of the bowl. This is because a dry erase marker is made up of a liquid in pigment form, so when the water interacts with it, it becomes one with the water, 
without dissolving. Because of these properties, you can now watch your figure move, and you can even interact with the figure via your finger or stick or whatever you have to make it dance even a little more. Number 4. Instant Ice The three states of water are solid, liquid, and vapor. But getting one state to the other may not take as much effort as you might think. For this experiment, you'll need some solid ice and a bottle or two of purified water. It has to be purified water, and you'll see why soon. Once you have the bottles of purified water, put them in the freezer and let them sit for about 2 hours and 45 minutes. When you take them out, they won't look different, but something has happened to the water. Take the bottle and give it a hard tap with your finger or on a table. Doing this will instantly convert the water to ice in mere seconds. This is because the purified water was cooled to just below its freezing point, and a jolt of any kind blasts it into its new state of being. Another way to show this is after you get the water out of the freezer, you pour it into a glass, and then drop an ice cube into the glass. Near instantly, the ice will cause the water to freeze. Another option is to get a bowl, fill it with ice, and then pour the water onto the ice. The water will turn into an icy slush and actually rise and bend depending on how you disperse the water. It's pretty cool. Number 3. DIY Lava Lamp Lava lamps were a staple of the 1960s, but that doesn't mean you can't get one now, or even better, make one of your own. All you'll need here is a plastic container with smooth sides, some vegetable oil, mineral or baby oil is also acceptable, water, Alka-Seltzer, or something similar, and some food coloring. Fill the container about a quarter of the way up with water, and the rest of it with vegetable oil. Wait a few minutes for the two to separate from one another. Now drop some color into the concoction. You'll notice how it drops through the oil and gets to the water. Once that's done, take one Alka-Seltzer, break it in half, and drop it in. The tablet will interact with the two and create blobs of color that give you your own little lava lamp. Since oil is less dense than water, it always rises to the top, whereas the food coloring is very much like water and sinks to the bottom. The Alka-Seltzer adds gas to the equation and shakes everything up to create some densities that make it more like the vegetable oil. And thus, they rise up just like a lava lamp. You can even turn off the lights, drop the other half of the tablet into the mix, and then turn on a flashlight to see a more neon-colored side of things. Number 2. Rocket Noodles How would you like to make a very simple rocket engine in your own home? Here's how you would need to do it, and it doesn't take any machinery outside of a lighter. Get a jar, preferably one that has a lid with a very small hole in the middle. In the jar, mix yeast and hydrogen peroxide. After mixing, quickly put the lid back on. Then get an uncooked noodle of pasta, like rigatoni, something tube-like in shape and yet can fit in the hole in the jar lid. Put the noodle into the hole, wait for a few seconds, and then get a match or lighter and put the flame just above the noodle itself. You'll notice instantly that it catches on fire, and the noodle itself becomes a rocket engine of sorts. But now how did this all happen? The mixture of yeast and hydrogen peroxide creates pure oxygen. Oxygen by itself can ignite, but pure oxygen burns with great intensity. Dispersed into a wide area, you'd be fine. But because the oxygen is rising up into the air via the pasta noodle, which is a very small surface area to let it all go through, the oxygen is more dense, and thus the fire ignites it with great passion, turning the noodle into a miniature rocket engine. And as long as you have the ingredients, you can repeat this particular experiment over and over again. Number 1. Tornado in a Bottle The all-time classic do-it-yourself experiment, you can create a tornado-like effect just by having water in some bottles. Here's what you need. You need two 2-liter bottles of soda. Empty them, preferably without wasting the soda, and then fill one up about halfway with water. Then, via a tube or very heavy tape, put the two open ends of the bottle together, keeping the one with the water at the bottom for now and then you seal them. Feel free to do a quick pouring test of one into the other bottle to make sure that the seal's good and tight. If it is, put all the water into one bottle or the other. Quickly turn it over and spin it around for a bit. Make sure it's a good hard spin. And after some spinning, let it go. A vortex like a tornado will form and slowly pour the water into the bottom bottle. The science behind this is that air is lighter than water. And the spinning you did mixed the water with the air. The air needs to rise up while the water sinks through the hole. 
and this creates a tornado. If you wish to have even more fun with this experiment, you can add your own little personal touches to it, like adding more water or glitter or even underwater lights if you can get them into the bottles. Well, thanks for watching, guys. What did you think of these science experiments? Do you want to try them yourselves or have you tried any of them already? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.